When I was in high school and college, way back in the last century, those of us with a modicum of sense could not help but notice the gigantic gap between how feminism was sold and how it was performed. It was sold as a movement seeking equality between the sexes, a basic recognition of women's humanity. My own observations, however, did not support this. I'll never forget reading an editorial in the student newspaper at Ohio State in which a young woman advocated for a man tax to pay for all the crimes men commit. The excesses and eccentricities of the feminist movement were not new to me, but I had pictured people like Gloria Steinem and Katherine McKinnon as distant, isolated madwomen, rather than the products and producers of social forces which had left their mark on many people all around me. When one of my fellow students proposed that I pay the social costs of crimes I did not commit so that she wouldn't have to, it was part of my growing realization that the generals had foot soldiers. It was fashionable back in those days to use reductio ad absurdum arguments against feminism. Every feminist violation against sense and common decency, and there were more than a few, was met with a description of how things would be if their ideas were carried to their logical conclusions, or if current trends continued. They made for some pretty outrageous scenarios, but I don't think we actually believed things would ever get to that point. Well, flash forward to the year of our Lord 2016, and things have pretty much gotten to that point. It seems like almost every month feminists concoct a new oppression they're experiencing that no one noticed before, but which must be taken seriously by anyone who doesn't hate women. A recent example of their madness is California's affirmative consent law. I'm always a little suspicious when a perfectly understood noun like consent suddenly needs a seeing eye adjective. For instance, justice doesn't really need social in front of it, unless you're trying to pull some kind of con. There's no such term as negative consent, and if there were it would mean refusal, denial, rejection. We know what it would mean because we know what consent means. There's no need to call it affirmative, it's affirmative by its very nature. Feminists are just trying to muddy the waters with the shit they're so full of. The law reads as follows. The people of the state of California do enact as follows. The people of the state of California? Are you sure it was the people and not a handful of people elected to office and now seduced by lobbyists and owing favors to their biggest campaign contributors? Anyway. In order to receive state funds for student financial assistance, colleges now have to adopt an affirmative consent standard in the determination of whether consent was given by both parties to sexual activity. Affirmative consent means affirmative, conscious, and voluntary agreement to engage in sexual activity. Uh, I think consent means that all by itself. It is the responsibility of each person involved in the sexual activity to ensure that he or she has the affirmative consent of the other or others to engage in the sexual activity. Right. Otherwise, it's rape. Even rapists understand this. Lack of protest or resistance does not mean consent, nor does silence mean consent. Ah, there's the rat I've been smelling. Consent is not just something associated with sex. Consent is a part of our lives every day. The concept applies any time someone wants to do something to or with another's property whether that property be their body, home, land, or possessions. If your friend knocks on your door and you open it and stand aside, they are not trespassing when they enter. Why? Because you gave them permission to come in by standing aside and not saying go the hell away. It would be the apex of absurdity to go to the police the next day, or the next month, or the next year, and ask them to charge your friend with trespassing you'd get laughed out of the police station. What if you're watching TV when your friend goes to your kitchen, gets a banana, and comes back to the couch and starts eating it? You see him do this and say nothing. Do you think the police will take you seriously if you claim he stole your banana? Why should it be any different for sex? These standards for consent are as old as the human race. Why do lawmakers and feminists get to change them? 
When a woman gets on all fours, arches her back, sticks that ass in the air, looks over her shoulder and licks her lips, she is asking for the D. It's been that way for over two million years since Homo erectus walked the earth. It's been that way on every inhabited continent. For something as old and primal as sex, everyone speaks consent in the same language. But this would constitute rape on California campuses now because she did not verbally express her desire to get jackhammered. What vast hubris does a person need to think they can dictate to the rest of us that things are suddenly different now? Affirmative consent must be ongoing throughout a sexual activity and can be revoked at any time. Correct. Although there's still no need for the adjective. The existence of a dating relationship between the persons involved, or the fact of past sexual relations between them, should never by itself be assumed to be an indicator of consent. Never? Not even when the two parties involved agreed that it would be? Consent can be granted as a one-time act for a particular instance, or it can be a standing condition over the long term. You can tell your friend, Sure, anytime you want to borrow my shovel, just come over and grab it. If you do this, and then file a police report when he borrows the shovel, you're what's known as an asshole. Being in a romantic relationship, being boyfriend and girlfriend, is a standing condition of consent to sexual activity. That, among other things, is what the relationship is. Now, in a particular moment, you can decline sex without breaking up, but if you withdraw consent to sex in general, then you have broken up with the person. So if your boyfriend wakes you up with cunnilingus, you can tell him, no, you have a headache and he needs to back off. And he can decide how many headaches per month he's willing to put up with before he seeks more congenial climbs. But he hasn't sexually assaulted you until he refuses to take no for an answer. If he walks up to a woman on the street and starts performing cunnilingus on her, unless she's really relaxed about that kind of thing, he's guilty of assault right away because he had no prior standing consent to engage in that with her. If feminists get their way, a man will have to treat his girlfriend the same way he would treat an unknown woman he passes by on the street. If that's the way feminists want their boyfriends to treat them, that's something they can work out in their own relationships, but they've got no right to force those ridiculous standards on the rest of us. And they've got no right to give that small percentage of women, devious enough to use it, the power to trick a guy into thinking he's got standing permission to engage in sexual activity, and then get him expelled by crying to university administrators that she never verbally gave him consent the night they 69 for an hour and a half, with her on top. And yes, I know the law is technically gender neutral, but don't kid yourself. You know who is going to suffer the brunt of these injustices. The standard used in determining whether the elements of the complaint against the accused have been demonstrated is the preponderance of the evidence. Meaning more certain than not, often called a 51% standard, as opposed to clear and convincing evidence, an 80% standard, and evidence beyond a reasonable doubt, a 99% standard. So if a young college girl goes to her RA and says, Last night, I put on my garter belt and thigh highs and lay down on the bed until my boyfriend, whom I've been with for three years, came home. When he saw me, he came over and asked permission to kiss me, and I said yes. And then I asked permission to nibble his neck, and he said yes. And then he asked if he could suck on my nipples, and I nodded. And then he asked me to clarify if I meant yes, so I said yes. And everything seemed to be going just fine, when all of a sudden, without asking, he stuck his thumb up my butt. And the authorities are slightly more inclined to believe her than not. They must expel her boyfriend or lose all state funds for financial assistance. Some of you may be thinking, hmm, that sounds retarded. Well, you may be more right than you know. Dictionary.com defines retarded as tarded and then again. It's not difficult to see that affirmative consent laws are tarded at least a couple of times. We've seen this kind of nonsense from feminists before. Something will be already figured out, precedents established, norms and procedures agreed upon, everything running along smoothly, and... Feminism. And suddenly we've got problems. Take criminal justice, for instance. It is a long-established tradition in our law that the accused be permitted to confront his accuser. But there are feminists who want to take this right away. Only in cases of rape. The accused is also considered legally innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. 
but there are feminists who want to lower the standard of proof, but only for rape, which is exactly what they've done on campuses in California. Not only that, but some feminists want to reverse the burden of proof, forcing accused men to prove themselves innocent. Again, only when the crime is rape. So here we go again. Everyone has things figured out, precedents are established, norms and procedures are agreed upon, everything is running along smoothly, happy horny people are getting it on and living happily ever after, and... Feminism. Now, suddenly, what has always constituted consent no longer constitutes consent but only when it comes to sex. I think the problem here, apart from feminism being a hate movement targeting men, is that feminists don't understand the concept of consent. We all know that with consent... Go ahead, pork away, pal! But without consent... Get away from her, you bitch! On this point, there is no disagreement between feminists and humans. But what is consent? The essence of consent is not a signature on a document, or a nod of the head, consent is something that happens internally, an agreement in your consciousness. Consent is a flickering of neurons, perhaps, or a swish of chemicals. Or if Rupert Sheldrake is correct, it's entirely ethereal. Whatever it is that constitutes an agreement, it is not something anyone else can see. But it makes all the difference in the world. When the physical actions are the same, consent is the difference between a gift and a robbery. It's the difference between an assault and a boxing match. It's the difference between visiting and trespassing. And it's the difference between having sex and rape. For this reason, it's very important that consent be understood and communicated to all parties involved. And on this point, I agree with the feminists. But did you ever hear that 93% of communication is nonverbal? That's actually a highly disputed figure, but I think we can all agree that a significant portion of our communication is nonverbal. These double-tarded feminists seem to be conflating the communication of consent with the actual consent itself. Rather than realize that consent is a subjective, internal condition, they confuse it for the physical manifestation of the consent and then wish to dictate to the rest of us what form that physical manifestation may take. When a woman claims a man raped her, we can never be 100% sure who is telling the truth. The best we can do is examine the evidence to try to determine whether or not she had that agreement in her mind or not. Are there witnesses that saw her come on to him right before they disappeared into the back bedroom? That would be strong evidence that she consented to the sex, although not a 100% guarantee. After all, she can withdraw her consent later. That might make her a cock tease, but it's within her legal rights. Does she have wounds in her vagina and his skin under her nails? Did someone outside the bedroom door hear her tell him no? That would be evidence that he did not have her consent. Although, again, it's not a 100% guarantee. She may prefer rough sex and likes to roleplay in the bedroom. All of these things need to be considered before we can determine whether a man is guilty of raping a woman. But what we absolutely ought not to do is lower our standards of proof below that of every other crime. Nor should we restrict a woman's communication of consent to strictly verbal consent when there are many nonverbal methods of communication, and many women, I dare say most, prefer these nonverbal methods. And we certainly shouldn't conflate consent with its verbal signaling and then find a man guilty of rape because that verbal signaling was absent. Yet feminists want to do exactly that. For the moment, this madness is confined to California campuses. As a libertarian, I am willing to respect the rights of a private institution. If they want to decide what constitutes consent on their own campus, their right to do so should be respected. If I don't like it, I simply won't send my sons there. And believe me, I will not be sending my sons there. But this law applies to all universities, not just private ones. And the universities themselves did not adopt it. The public had a portion of the money they earned taken from them to subsidize so-called public universities, but the universities were threatened with withholding of those funds if they did not adopt feminist sexual consent policies. And to no group in history has the phrase, give them an inch and they'll take a mile, been better applied than to feminists. Already there are calls for making affirmative consent the legal standard everywhere. 
It's reason number 1,314 why feminism is a hate movement, and it ought to inspire right-thinking individuals from all over the political spectrum to stand up and oppose the absolute ludicrousness of this policy. Ludicrous, but not surprising. After Donald Trump is painted in period blood, nothing feminists do could ever shock me ever again. I've seen it all. Now that we understand consent better, we'll be ready next time to analyze... Birth rate? What the fuck?! Thank you.